Hey everyone, now uh, we are going to discuss the development of the bones. Okay, so basically we have two types of ossification. The first one is endochondrial ossification and the second type is intermembranous ossification. So what happens in these two types is that in the endochondrial ossification basically first of all you would, uh, you would see a mitochondrial sorry a, a cartilage mold that would be produced by the chondrocytes okay so the chondrocytes would produce what the cartilage matrix or the cartilage mold and then we have a osteoblastic and osteoclastic activity okay so these osteoblasts and osteoclasts would do what they would form the bone okay so they would lay down the bone and that bone would, would be the woven bone and later on this woven bone would be replaced by the lamellar bone okay so this is how the endochondrial ossification occurs but in the intramembranous ossification, what happens is that there is no formation of the cartilage mold. The, the lamellar bone is directly formed here. Okay. So there is a direct formation of the lamellar bone here with no presence of cartilage. Now let's see the examples of the bones that would undergo these processes. So first of all, let us see that where in which bones the intramembranous ossification occurs. So it happens in the bones of skull. But not all the bones of skull so each and every bone of skull except the base of skull and the temporal temporal bone in which the petrous part of the bone is not formed by the intramembranous ossification and the auditory ossicles auditory ossicles so it means that all the bones of skull would undergo the intramembranous ossification except these three uh, we have the base of skull temporal bone uh, which has the petrous part of the bone and the auditory ossicle so these three would undergo the endochondral ossification okay and further we have the facial bones as well which undergo the intramembranous ossification and the clavicle okay so these are the examples of the intramembranous ossification um, I mean the bones that undergo the intramembranous ossification and we have the examples of the bones that undergo the endochondral ossification so these are first of all those bones of the skull which were not undergoing the intramembranous ossification right so these were the base of skull and the petrous part okay and the auditory ossicles now further what will be the types of the axial skeleton axial and appendicular skeleton so these are all the bones that would undergo the endochondral ossification the adult would have this woven bone if the bone has undergone the fracture or if there is a pedges disease right so only then the person the adult person would have this woven bone otherwise it is not present normally okay so in adult as i've uh, told you earlier that the woven bone will always be abnormal okay so this was the basic difference between these two types of ossification now let us see what points may have been missed uh, so we would see from the book okay now the development so during embryogenesis long bones they develop from the cartilage mold by the process of the endochondral ossification so it means that we have another point as well that the endochondral ossification it occurs in the long bones okay it occurs in the long bones while the intramembranous ossification it occurs in the flat bones right and in both of these types, in both types of the ossification, these both arise from the mesenchymal precursor cells, right? Mesenchymal. But then the process of the bone formation is different in both of these types, as you already know, okay? 
Now let's see how this endochondrial ossification occurs. So first of all, what we have is the cartilaginous model. Okay. So first of all, you know that a cartilage model or a cartilage mold is formed in the endochondral ossification. Okay. So these cells would be the chondrocytes, right? And then in the second stage, what will happen? Suppose this is the same cartilage model and then you will soon see that the osteoblast would occur inside this cartilage and then they would perform the function that is they would make the bone cells okay so they now are gonna form the bone cells in the central region so as they are in the central region and these this is the first site where the bone is forming so we can say that what is happening around here that this is the diaphysis area which is a middle shaft mid shaft area right of the bone so this mid shaft or the diaphysis area is referred to as the primary ossification center okay as you know the primary means first ossification is the process of making of the bone and the center is basically the location or the area where the bone is being formed so what is the first site where the bone is formed it is the diaphysis or the mid shaft okay and let me tell you the meaning of this word as well endo means below right chondral means the cartilage and ossification means it is a, a process of formation of the bone. So as you can see here, we have a cartilage here. Okay. And as the bone is being formed within the cartilage, it is forming inside the cartilage. That is why this process is referred to as a endochondral ossification. Right. Now, what would be the next step? The third step would be. So now. From the second step, this bone has been formed. The small area, okay, of the cartilage is replaced by the spongy bone. So now the spongy bone has been developed, and in the central part, what would happen? The osteoclast would come. The osteoclast would do what? They would resorb the bone from the center, and in this way, a gap will be formed. And this gap is referred to as a medullary canal. Okay. In which you know what will deposit? The bone marrow. Right. Now this was a third step. Now what will happen in the fourth step? Let's see. And yes you might be noticing that with each successive steps what is happening is that the cartilage is now being replaced by the bone right and in this third step what is happening side by side is that these areas so these are also invaded by the osteoblast and the osteoblasts are forming the bone here as well so it means that now the cartilage is remained in this area only okay and now the osteoblasts are actively forming the bone here as well okay so it means that this cartilage will now soon be replaced by what by the compact bone okay so in the next step we will see what okay so here is the bone now this bone has formed like this it means that this area has been elongated the bone is now growing more and more right and the cartilage is getting diminished right and here now as you know that this is the second area where the bone is being made so this area is referred to as the secondary ossification center right now the bones of these two areas will get increased in number okay the bone will get increased there will be more bone formation okay so it means that now here you can see a very long area of the bone and here as well. Now this has progressed, okay, 
from this to this side and now a very thin rim of a cartilage is present here and this thin rim is referred to as a articular cartilage it is a articular cartilage okay and a very small epiphyseal plate is present between the diaphysis and the epiphysis okay so diaphysis was the primary ossification center and the epiphysis was the secondary ossification center okay so now we are going to discuss the endochondral bone growth so first of all suppose that this is a bone okay and this is the area of the cartilage so this is uh, going to be the area where the chondrocytes are present all right and this area would have the osteoblast that are actively forming what the bone cells and in this area the chondrocytes are actively forming the cartilage right and these chondrocytes are forming the cartilage in this direction the osteoblasts are forming the bones in bone cells in this direction so what will happen okay first of all this is the epiphysis this is diaphysis and this is the epiphyseal plate okay now as the bone elongates so what happens this area would move a bit upward it means that now the bone cells, uh, now the cartilage cells are actively being replaced by the osteoblast, okay, in this direction and the chondrocytes are also being formed in the upward direction. So it means that for the bone to be elongated, the chondrocytes must be actively proliferating, must be actively forming the cartilage so that the bones can grow in length, okay. So, but... What happens that in some time in life, this cartilage gets diminished and we are just left with only a single line. And now this line is referred to as a epiphyseal line. It means that now we have no more cartilage. So the bone will stop growing here. Okay, so this is a point where the bones cease to grow right so this was the development of the bone where the endochondral ossification okay now we're going to discuss in a bit detail about the intramembranous ossification okay so what the name is telling you intra means within or you can say between membranous means what are the structures uh, which are membranous in nature? So you can say the connective tissue. So the connective tissue, right. And ossification means the formation of the bone, right. It is the formation of bones. It means that the intramembranous ossification would tell you that the bone is going to be formed between or within the connective tissues, right. So we're going to have the okay for example let me draw the figure so that you can get it more easily so in this case what we have as i've already told you that in this type of ossification what we have is that uh, there is no um uh, we can say the cartilage model the bone is directly formed by the osteoblast right so first of all we would have something like this which is the connective tissue okay and soon what will happen is that in the central area, what will happen? The osteoblast would come, the osteoblast would invade, right? And these osteoblasts would then soon gonna form the bone, okay? They would underlie the bones. These are the osteoblast cells and the small greeny like area, let's say this is the osteoid which is the bone cells okay now what is being happening is that the osteoblasts they are forming the bone and in the next step they're gonna form more bone and this bone would have the trabeculi as well so in the center we are gonna have the spongy bone 
and in around the peripheries we're gonna have the compact bone all right and then what would happen in the last step these and in this step the blood vessels were also coming okay the blood vessels were proliferating and then now what will happen in the last that these blood vessels will grow into the bone into the spongy area of the bone and now this is the compact bone again this is the spongy bone and within the spongy bone what will be uh, what we will have is the red marrow all right and the osteoblasts they now invade to the surface of the bone okay the surface of the matrix and this is the fibrous periosteum so that is what is a intramembranous ossification so I hope this is clear to you and thanks for watching.